let's do a quick review. Um, it won't be long, because there's not really a lot to say. So this is God of War Ascension. Yeah, we're about to beat the game. I think this game's great. Um, it's, it's, you know, I think the first thing I need to mention is the graphics. Because it's by far the best part of this game, and it's really what makes the game. It's so gorgeous. I mean, I'm playing it in standard definition. Oh, hold on. Uh, let me just turn down the volume of the game. Just in case it's a little bit too loud. Alright, that should be better. Um, yeah, it's just such a gorgeous game. Uh, it's so beautiful, in fact, that you could definitely uh, pass this off as a, a PS4 game. But it's actually not a PS4 game. It was originally a PS3 game. It did get ported to the PS4, and it does not look out of place. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you were playing this in 1080p at 60 frames per second, it would be it would be right at home on the PlayStation 3. Um, and the graphics are so important to this kind of game because the the vistas, the environments, are so beyond belief. They're so fantastic. And, you know, the environments in a hack-and-slash game like this, you know, where a game where you're just, like, doing repetitive things over and over again, obviously the gameplay and how fun hacking and slashing things are is extremely important, but, you know, where you're doing that hacking and slashing is equally important. And I really think that's what helps separate the God of War games from the other hack-and-slash games, and it's actually why, part of the reason why they have persisted for so long, whereas games like, you know, Ninja Gaiden have kind of fallen by the wayside. You know, Devil May Cry made a comeback recently. Uh, but this game, you know, the God of War series, has eclipsed all of those other hack and slash games in terms of, like, production value and quality. So, God of War Ascension came out after uh, God of War 3. And this game, um is, you know, it, it's out of all the, the original games, God of War 1 through 3, this one's the best looking. I know there's a there's a new game out for the PS4, God of War, it's a reboot. That one looks even more beautiful. Um, but yeah, definitely out of the original three, this is this is the best looking. And it's it, the enemy design's so good. You know, just like how all the, the it's they're so creative with the enemies, and also the kills. You know, killing the enemies, all the animations, they look fantastic. Um, what is weak about the game though is um the story. So like, if they called this game God of War Four, it actually would have been more disappointing, ironically enough. And the reason is because they're really... The story isn't conveyed as well as the previous games. You know, in a lot of other hack and slash games, they didn't concentrate too much on the story. Like, the story in Devil May Cry 1 was pretty awful. Um, well, it wasn't awful, it just wasn't there. And I kind of get that impression with this game. You know, there's lore, you can pick up things like what I just picked up. Um... And you can read some stuff, but like one of the things that's missing about this game is Kratos' personality. Um, you know, like in God of War 1, 2, 3, like you get so much of his personality, and that's another big appeal to the games, right? The fact that he's so mad and he's like so angry and he, he punishes all, anyone and anything that even gets in his way. He'll even kill innocent people, and like, and, and it doesn't even bother you. It's just funny because like he goes about it in like I don't give a fuck kind of attitude and you know his personality is so important to the games and unfortunately that doesn't come across in this game he barely says anything at all and the little that he does say isn't very impactful the story itself is just kind of bland it's kind of boring um i don't even know exactly what's going on i think this game takes place before God of War 1, but even I'm not exactly sure. Um, in any case, it's just not interesting. 
Like, in the other God of War games, like, you're, in God of War 1, you're trying to kill Ares. In God of War 2 and 3, you're trying to f kill Zeus. And that's really all you need to know. And then everything else is just, like, emotion and interesting things, you know? It doesn't really, like, the details aren't that important. They're there for those who want to see it. Um, but they're ultimately unimportant because it doesn't get in the way. Whereas in this game, yeah, it's it's just not interesting. Um, the other kind of problem is I got a little, I, I didn't, like the, the gameplay itself, like the combat isn't bad, you know, it's like, it's typical, you know, you have your different kinds of uh, weapons, you have the flame chainsword, you have uh, this lightning chainsword, you have uh, this ice chainsword, and then you have the shadow chainsword, and that's pretty much it. And then you have like a couple of other abilities, which I don't really use that much, like this thing that kind of stuns enemies, and then you have another thing that kind of clones you or something. Um, in the other games, you actually got different weapons, like significantly different weapons, whereas in this one, you just get derivations of your your chainsaw and that wouldn't be too bad but like it's not really clear what enemies are weak against what um, and I, I don't even think that's the point I think they just want you to alternate between the different attacks on the fly um, to increase your combos and then it'll be build up a meter and then once the meter has been built up you can hit the L3 and R3 buttons to do like a super attack and in the previous games, like, you would go into, like, a rage mode, and then, like, you have an amount of time where you can attack enemies normally, uh, but your attacks are all improved, and you have more combos. Um, whereas in this game, when you when you build it up, um, you, you usually just do, a, like, a, a single super attack, which is not really satisfying. It doesn't really feel all that great. I, I would have preferred if it just he went into, a, like, a constant rage mode. I think they do call it Rage Mode in this game, but it doesn't last long. You know, it's usually just a single attack. And yeah, it's not very good. Um, yeah, and also the other thing is, like, he can't do his full combo set unless the meter has been built up. And the meter will basically drain completely if you get hit once. Um, so it's, it's very difficult to maintain the, the meter at max, and then once it's at max, then you can do the full combo set. Uh, but you usually, I mean, like, what would you rather have? The full combo set or just do the super attack? It's not really clear what's better. So I, I just don't really like that. Um, the other thing is, I, I can't, I don't remember the, uh, the rolling dodge attack being so clunky in the other games. In the other games, I, I... I could be wrong about this, but I felt like you could do like some combos and then cancel out of it pretty quickly and roll out of the way. And like while it does look like I can cancel my my combo pretty easily and then roll out of the way, in actual combat when you're fighting enemies, he gets hit a lot. You know, it, it's usually very difficult to roll out of the way and cancel. Like when he's in the middle of a combo, he, he wants to finish it. And I, I definitely got that impression in this game. So, again, you know, I, I would say the weakest parts of this game are probably the story and the combat. Um, the puzzles are okay. I, I never got stuck on any of them. Um, so they're, they're all right. So I, I, they weren't really obtuse. And that's always a good thing for me. Um, uh, but they're kind of unsatisfying, I guess. Um, because, like in the last puzzle, all like you had to do something kind of sort of elaborate, but the only thing that you got was just like a ladder dropped so like it's not terrible maybe some other people would have a problem with it more but I personally don't mind it too much at all uh, so I think the puzzles are just fine yeah really just the, the weakest part of this game would be um, the combat to a lesser extent the combat's not bad don't get me wrong I know I, I've been picking on it a bit but I guess like compared to God of War 2 and 3 it's not quite as good. And the story, and especially the conveyance of the story, is not interesting. And you lose a lot of the personality of Kratos in this game. Other than that, it's, it's fantastic. Definitely the highest point of this game. 
are the visuals. And it, it's so good that I actually am seriously considering getting this game on the PS4 just to fully appreciate the graphics and all of its splendor. We should talk a little bit about the music. Music's just fine. <laughs> it's just fine. And so is the voice acting. I think they ch they did choose a different voice actor for Kratos, but don't quote me on that. I'm not really sure. He sounds a little bit different. But again, it's hard to tell uh, because he just doesn't talk that much anyway. So that's it. I think it's a great game. And that's all I gotta say.